Welcome everyone to Race Face TV. My name is Rod Wortham. I'm going to be your host tonight. Tom Baker's taking the night off, but we've got an exciting show for you scheduled this evening. So let's get right into it. First of all, we have two great female racers to highlight today, Robin Bonanno and Kaylee Barker. But first, let's go to our Race Face brand development driver updates. What a weekend for the Race Face brand development drivers. Let's start off with Sam Mayer, who brought home another checkered flag win in the number 22 Farbo Motorsports Legends car at Anderson Speedway. Then he jumps in the number 41 Menards late model, starts at the back of the pack, and battles his way up to a sixth place finish. Sam will be back in the late model at Hickory Motor Speedway this weekend. Now let's go out west to race face driver Ryan Vargas. He was at Kern County Raceway for the Twin 30s. Ryan qualified second for the first main event, but had to start eight when the field was inverted, but after only 14 laps, took the lead. Vargas had a six to seven car length lead when a late caution came out with seven laps to go. He then had a heated battle with national points leader Trevor Huddleston, but was edged out at the end and finished second. In the second main event, a 10 car invert again put Ryan in the ninth starting spot and again he raced his way to a second place finish. Great job, Ryan. Now let's go to the Midwest where we find Sheldon Creed as he pulls double duty again, this time at Road America on Sunday for the Trans Am Road American Muscle Car Challenge. The race took place under wet conditions at the iconic four mile course at Elkhart Lake. Creed began the race in 12th position and worked his way up through the field into a second place over the first 10 laps. Then after a 10 lap shootout with defending race winner, Tony Buffamonte, Sheldon took the lead with five laps to go and went on to win his first race in only his fourth start in the number 11 Speed Logics Dodge Challenger. Later in the day, he then raced his second NASCAR Xfinity race at Road America, but had a transmission failure after working his way up inside the top 10. Up next for Sheldon, ARCA Dirt Track Racing from the historic DeCoin Mile in DeCoin, Illinois. I know the showstopper is going to be exciting again on the dirt. Both race face drivers Jesse Love and Adam Lemke were scheduled to duel it out on the dirt for the championship in the USAC HPD Midget Series race from Mersenne Speedway, but at the last moment that race was canceled. That's still up in the air as the two of them are only separated by seven points. But as you know, racers will adjust. So both racers headed to Madeira Speedway to compete as teammates in the Junior Late Model Series. Adam Lemke started the night off by qualifying second in his Nate Clower Motorsports Late Model, then brings home a second place finish in his first start in the 5150 Energy Drink Junior Late Model Series. Adam will compete full time in 2018 in that Junior Late Model Series. Now teammate Jesse Love qualified third at Madeira, but led all 75 laps and notched win number four in only six starts in his JRI Shocks 5150 Energy Drink Late Model. Jesse has a commanding lead in the points championship headed into the last two races of the year. Well, as you can see, it was an exciting weekend for the Race Face brand development drivers. What an amazing group of young talent. As I said, Robin Bonanno stopped by the studio earlier this week, so we sat down and talked a little about this six-time SCCA champion. Let's take a look at that first interview. Well, hello everyone and welcome. Um, I've got a very special guest with me today. Uh, Robin Bonanno is an accomplished award-winning race car driver with over 18 years of experience. Uh, she's competed in over 145 different sanctioned races, including the SCCA, ARCA, 46 first place finishes. That is impressive. 
She's a six-time SCCA champion, but there's so much more to Robin than just racing. Um, she has served as a, a race car instructor for both SCCA and Richard Petty Driving Enterprises, which I'm sure there's a lot of stories behind that. And also an accomplished business owner, a pilot, a musician, a snow ski instructor, and an IT trainer. Uh, to me, that's a very, very impressive resume. And then I also understand that there's the charity side of what you're doing out there to be able to aware or to raise awareness for different charities. But let's go back a little bit and tell us about your racing experience and when you got started and more importantly, why you got started in racing. Okay. So I started racing um, in 2000. I grew up working on cars with my dad. We were always restoring cars. So I always had a love for cars. And in high school, I had an opportunity to own a Corvette. So I got a little bit of the taste of what it's like to drive a performance car and some speed. And I really enjoyed it. Um, growing up in New Jersey, I never believed that I could even be a race car driver. It never even entered my mind that a female from New Jersey just, I just didn't think I can do that. I didn't think that opportunity was there for me. And then I moved to Florida, and my neighbor was Amos Johnson. He's a retired race car driver, very successful one. And he kind of got the bug started with me. He said, you know, you can, you can become a race car driver just by going out and going through an accredited school and getting a license. So we did that. Um, I started with a Ferrari. We had a Ferrari street car that we ran in Sports Car Club of America. Um, they're... No, I'm sorry, it wasn't Sports Car Club of America, it was with the Ferrari Club of America. And started becoming pretty good, pretty fast with it. And that's when Amos said, it's time. You're going to get hurt. You need to be in the right equipment. So we did go to the Panos Driving School. And I did very well there. So I figured, yeah, we'll, we'll give this a shot. And I started in the Triumph Spitfire, which is a, a nice starter car. Pretty slow, pretty safe. Did that for a couple of years, and then I moved into the British Radical, which is a higher performance race car, uh, much faster, and had much success with that. It kind of was a nice, smooth transition. I, I enjoyed having more speed. And from there, a lot of doors just started to open. So the bug started to get a little bit uh, stronger. It's almost like a drug addiction. You just want more, you want to go faster, you want to get better. So um, we just continued with that. And then the opportunity came to drive the stock car and try the ARCA series. Well, that's got to be a big switch from SCCA and sports cars that are all about handling and braking to a big, heavy stock car. Um, what was that experience like? Okay, so I have an interesting story about that. So here I am, I'm thinking like I'm hot stuff. And I'm with the um, Richard Petty School. And one of the competitions we had was to go into um, Kershaw. And first they put us in Vipers, and we did the road course. And I got in there and I just killed it. I beat all the guys. So I was like, yes, I have this. And then that was just a warm up. The real competition was in the stock car. And it's the first time I drove a stock car and I was on the road course and I thought, oh, it's just a car. I can do this. I can drive anything, Mack truck, I don't care. Well, I got in that thing and finished dead last, last, if there's like a last, last. It was horrible. I kept spinning it out and it was so hard. It was like driving a tank. I hated it. I, at first I hated it and I said to him, I said, I said to my husband, I said, what are we gonna do with this? I said, I can't drive this thing. I didn't even have enough strength to apply the brakes. You need like 500 foot pounds of pressure. And they have a little simulator right outside the track that you can apply to try. And I had like 300. So when I got in this thing, I thought there's no way I can handle this. It was like night and day, I was stunned. I was just stunned how hard it was. So is that the decision at, maybe at that time that said, SCCA and sports cars is basically where I'm going to stay focused at. It is. I love sports cars, but we wanted to go on to the next level anyway. Maybe it wasn't going to, the end game wasn't stock car, NASCAR, but we did go through the um, 
experience of renting some stock cars at Rockingham and went through the school, did a couple of weekends up there, um, oval track, a little bit of road course, just so we can do an ARCA race and show NASCAR that I can compete. I could be safe, I can be competitive. And we did that and we did the race up in New Jersey at um, New Jersey Motorsports. Mm -hmm. And we achieved our goal, we finished the race. We had a safe race and we made everybody happy. Um, is it my passion to race stock cars? No, I like to stay in these sports cars. In the sports cars. Yeah, I think I, I'm better suited for the sports cars. As you can see, Robin is an amazing woman on the track, but also off the track, as you will see in our part two interview that will air next week. That's an amazing first part of our show. So let's take a short commercial break and we'll be right back with young race car driver, Kaylee Barker. Welcome to Race Face Brand Development. You might be asking, what is Race Face Brand Development? We are all about helping young drivers get noticed while creating a brand. If your branding isn't part of your strategy and you're looking for a competitive advantage in the marketplace, I encourage you to reach out to us at Race Face Brand Development and let us provide you a free consultation on how we can help further your driver's career. Ever need a doctor after hours? Well, searching won't help, but what do you do? You could go to the urgent care or ER, but if only there was a better way. Introducing the MNO Plus Card. No waiting rooms, no copay, no consultation fee. Giving you 24 seven access to a doctor by phone or online. It's easy to get started with affordable plans starting at $15 a month for a family of five. For more information, visit mnoplus.com today. We have a simple mission, build champions. And we do this by offering you the opportunity to learn from some of the top individuals in the motorsports industry. And parents, this course is not just for young drivers, but for you as well. Our eight week online course will cover marketing and branding, how to build a fan base, how to use social media effectively, how to master the media and much, much more. So if you are looking for a competitive advantage, then Race Face University is for you. We look forward to making you one of our future champions. All right, well, welcome back. I encourage all of you, especially you young drivers, to go out there and actually check out racefaceuniversity.com. You'll be glad you did. If you're looking for that competitive advantage off the track, you can really learn a lot from this eight week course. So go check it out. Now our next guest is Kaylee Barker. She's 20 years old from Las Vegas, Nevada. Kaylee has been racing since she was eight years old and is a three time Bandolero champion. And in 2012, she became the youngest female to win a NASCAR Wheeling All-American Series race. Kaylee, welcome to our show. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, we're glad to have you with us from the big glitzy city of Las Vegas, Nevada. It's got to be got to be exciting to live out there in that atmosphere, isn't it? Um, I mean, you really stay out of it. You try and avoid this trip if you live here. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. I've only been out there a couple of times, and and um, gosh, it's hot. When I was there, I went, you know, like really stupid. I came out in like September. But I see that you're in the garage. You got the car behind you. Tell us a little bit about the car. Um, it's an NASCAR super late model. We just got our new freight train motor, our parts motor from Brad Peters. So she was pretty good this past weekend. Got my new PFC brakes on her too. Um, we're racing out here at the Bullring, uh, looking to do some SRL races here soon. Um, just funding. <laughs> it is all about funding, isn't it? That's, uh, that's part of the the life that we live in today. So I got to ask you a question. What made you decide that you wanted to be a race car driver? 
Well, my dad actually used to race, so I grew up. My, he would take me in the baby carrier to the racetrack out in the shops, um, kind of just throw me in a corner, and then I'd just watch them work on the cars. And <laughs> So it's basically all I've known. <laughs> so now we know in a short little time that we have something in common. I went to my first race when I was six months old. Wow. Now, that, yep. was just, that was a few years ago. <clears throat> what are you laughing about? It was 58, <laughs> 58 years ago. And my mom actually took me to a dirt track and she put me in a pillowcase so that when it got real dusty, she could flip the top over so I wouldn't get dirt on me. And then up until the time that she passed away, she would always ask me, when are you going to get a real job? And I'm like, you took me to a race when I was six. What did you expect? So that's exactly. something that we definitely have in common. So you started racing at eight years old. And I think that in today's racing world, that's not all that unusual. But I think the unusual part is, and maybe the question that everybody wants to know, how are you accepted because you're a girl? How do the guys kind of treat you? Um, at home here in Vegas, they treat me pretty normal because they've known me since I was in a baby carrier. Um, the only issue I had was one time when I went to Orange Show Speedway um, in the street stock division for their big money race that they did. Um, a few of the track champions were saying, oh, why are they letting a 14-year-old girl race here and all this other stuff. Um, I actually ended up qualifying 10th and qualified ahead of 34 other people. So that kind of made them be quiet and they got a lot more respect from me. But as far as being a girl, that's the only issue I've kind of had. Since here at home, they've known me, like I said, since I was in a baby carrier. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And, and the fact that you've won three Bandolero championships, that's pretty impressive. And, I, and maybe, you know, maybe the guys were a little intimidated. Yeah, maybe so. Um, I, I guess. <laughs> and then after that Orange show, that was in 2012. Um, then the next year in 13, I went and run went and ran the super stock division here and won the championship. So um, it's kind of, you know, you gain respect very slowly, but they've known me for so long that I think that they knew it was coming eventually. <laughs> right, right. So I know that, uh, that every race car driver makes sacrifices um, to, become a, to become a racer. It's not just something that you can decide one day that's like, hey, you know what, I think I'm going to drive a race car. So Talk to us a little bit about some of the sacrifices that you've made, and has it really been worth it? Um, basically, the sacrifices that I've been making uh, for racing is, you know, just being in the garage every night, not going out with my friends, which, you know, is totally fine. That's normal to me. I see that as normal, and it's definitely worth it because as a driver, I know my car inside and out, so that helps us on the weekends making adjustments when we're testing during the race. I know what to do as far as adjustments go. So, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it just staying in the garage basically 24-7 while I'm not at work <laughs> and um, just learning the car inside and out, and that helps me become a better driver, I feel. So, yeah, it's definitely worth it, all the sacrifices. Absolutely. So I'm looking at the car behind you, and I see it says 34 plus 2. Tell us what the plus two stands for. Well, when my dad used to race, he was number 34. And one of my sponsors, ExecuClean, when he raced, he was 36. And Mo, the owner of ExecuClean, he bought my first suit, my first helmet, all that kind of stuff. And he always joked, hey, what number are you going to be when you start racing? I was like, oh, 34, like my dad. He was like, well, if you're not 36 like me, then I'm not going to get you all this stuff. And you're going to have to sit super far away. And, of course, he was joking. So we made it 34 plus do as a joke but it kind of stuck and now everyone at the track knows me by that <laughs> that's pretty cool that's a that's a very cool story i've never i've never heard <laughs> that type of story before so 34 plus 2 legendary that will be an, another legendary number in the sport so let me ask you a quick question who are your racing heroes oh that's a tough one <laughs> um i would say matt crafton um, he's basically who I look up to. Um, I aspire to be on Thor Sport Racing, actually. So um, we talk usually every week. So he's kind of, you know, super down to earth, of course. So I actually, I aspire to be like him. Um, I want to race in the truck series on Thor Sport. Another one of my racing heroes would probably be Justin Johnson, who races out here locally. 
Um, just watching him, I actually race against him now. So just watching him, um, when he goes into the corners, I'm like, wow, I, I want to be like that. <laughs> and he, um, he won the Irwindale Super Late Model Championship out there a few years ago and raced in the truck series. So I definitely aspire to be like him. Just his driving style is amazing to me. Well, I'll tell you what, Matt Crafton's a good guy to, to, to actually, uh, uh, kind of follow in that path because he, he's definitely an amazing driver in that truck series. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you, we have a lot of young racers that watch the shows every week. So you actually are the first female racer that we've had on the show. So you, you get to be a first at another thing. Ooh. We actually had Robin Bonanno on the show a little bit earlier, but you guys kind of made our female debut together. Um, so for all the young girl racers that are watching out there today, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, advice that I would give any young female racer is just to be persistent. Don't give up just because, you know, you might get knocked down just a little bit, but definitely just don't give up and just keep digging and um, always make time for the fans because they're the most important. They're what keeps the sport going. Um, just make time for the fans, be persistent, and, you know, just keep your head down. We're going to take that clip and we're going to send that to NASCAR so that they don't <laughs> forget that because you're, you are 100% right. This sport, was, this sport was built around the fans. And, right. and the fans all come from these local tracks. And you always hear us every single week. We end up our show actually saying, go out and support your local track. So where do you see Kaylee in two years? In two years, hopefully, I am either racing in the K&N series or in the truck series. Um, like I said before, it just takes funding and the right people to sign the check. So, <laughs> um, But I definitely want to either be in the truck series in two years or in the K&N series. Well, there you've got it. If you're a sponsor out there and you're looking for, especially uh, to get on board with a, with a female driver, there she is. She's right there. Pick up the phone. We're going to actually put a contact number on this so they can actually call you, Kaylee. So, so, okay. outside, <laughs> so outside of racing and working on the car, what does Kaylee like to do off the track? Uh, I work a lot. <laughs> um, I, well, football season's coming up. I enjoy football. I actually have my fantasy draft next week. So <laughs> that's also very fun to me. I like bowling. I bowl in a league, and my league actually starts next week, too. Um, but other than that, you know, my charities, I work with Las Vegas Labrador Rescue and Project 150, and that's also very important to me, being um, out in the community and helping. Um, I just really enjoy sports in general. <laughs> well, that's really good. We, we love the charitable aspect of that. And um, so tell us a little bit about, because I'm a dog lover, tell us a little bit about the Labrador uh, program that you're involved with? So the Las Vegas Labrador Rescue, they will take labs that are either up in Utah or locally here in Vegas. Um, there's a big kill shelter up in Utah. So um, around like once every couple of weeks, they'll, they'll go and get dogs and bring them down. And then the goal is to find them a forever home. So um, they'll go into the foster homes that we have set up with um, a few of the families here. And then uh, they're up for adoption, and there's a huge form that the people have to fill out to make sure that they're, you know, really set on bringing a new dog into their home and um, giving the dogs the best treatment possible. So we actually, we were a foster, uh, foster family, and we foster failed with our Labrador Cupid that we have now. Um, my German Shepherd Lightning just fell in love with her. They're best of buddies, and, you know, it's just great just seeing them get along. <laughs> Yeah, we, we thought about doing the foster thing with the dogs, too, but we figured that over a period of time, we'd have, like, you'd open up the door and there'd be, like, 30 of them there because we'd get attached yeah. to them and never want to be able to give them back. So I've got an exactly. idea for you. Maybe one, one weekend you should put, like, a lab's head. My pedigree used to run a car back in the days in NASCAR, and that car was extremely popular because of all the pet lovers out there, so... Maybe something that you want to think about. Put one of those Labradors yeah. on the hood of your car. You might be surprised at the, the following that you'll get. So we're just about done with this, with this interview, but let me ask you something. Would you like to give a little shout out to some of your sponsors? Sure. Um, I'd like to thank ExecuClean Janitorial Service, Las Vegas Car App, 
our fire and safety crew here in Vegas. They're, you know, the best in the country in my, um, in my opinion. Uh, Brad Peters with Freight Train Motors, PSC Brakes, and my parents, and God for everything. Well, I, I, I especially like the fact that you guys come from a religious background. Um, thumbs up to you on that. Now, one of the other things that we wanted you to do is we know that one of the best ways to get sponsors involved is to have a big fan base. So tell us about your social media networks. And I know that you're on Facebook, and we're going to put your Facebook URL on here. So we're going to encourage everybody to go to, to her Facebook page and like her page and tell her a little bit what you liked about the show tonight. So, Kaylee, we're just about ready to wrap up. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the viewing audience before we leave for tonight? I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. Like I said, fans from the sport, and without you guys, it wouldn't be possible. Well, we sure appreciate it. And Ryan Vargas, if you're watching, we talked about you earlier in the show. We was going to tell some interesting stories about you. I actually heard some off camera, but we're going to save that for another time. So, Kaylee, thank you so much for being with us. We're probably going to invite you back later in the year to see kind of where you're at and, and maybe try to uh, uh, work with you a little bit on getting you some more recognition uh, and some exposure out there for a potential sponsor. But we'd like to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. And as we always say, go out and support your local racetrack. Make sure to go to Race Face TV on our Facebook page, like our page, share it, and we'll see you back here next week. <laughs>